I am Sparsh. I am the Vice President of Unicorn India Ventures. We are an early stage VC fund operating out of India. So today we are here to basically discuss about this new phenomenon or maybe a surge in the phenomenon that we all have been noticing, that more and more startups or you know, entrepreneurs are coming not from Kormangla or Hawaii or you know, Cyber Hub, but rather from hinterlands, from Bihar, from Surat, from Tamil Nadu, and from Jammu and Kashmir. So we are basically here to understand some of the nuances, what learnings that are here. And for that, we basically have three panelists with us. Uh, I would like to just, uh, with the permission, uh, have a small kind of introduction to all of you. Uh, so first, we have Sushank Kumar with us. Uh, mostly known for uh, being the founder of Dehat. Dehat is, uh, for the people who don't know, is one of India's largest market linkages firm. It's a firm that I wish I had invested in, uh, but never had the chance to. So Dehat uh, has been valued recently uh, at 700 million, has raised 220 million till date. Uh, started off in Bihar, uh, now has Temasek, Prosu, Safina, and uh, Sequoia uh, on the cap table, the who's, of, who's and who of the investing world. So uh, Shashank had worked previously on Farm and Farmers Foundation. It was a precision tech enabled farming tools. And uh, he is an IITN. Uh, he happens to be from the batch of, of my elder brothers from IIT Delhi. So happy to have you on the stage, sir. Next, we have Hemindar Mathur with us. Uh, he is the venture partner at Bhadar Innovation Fund, uh, specializing in investing in, in agri, in clean tech, in healthcare. He's also the co-founder of Think AG. Uh, he, it's a non-profit working on driving innovation in the agri space. Uh, he, had, has a, he has had an illustrious career before that. He was the MD at SEAF India, a global impact investor. He was the ED of Yes Bank's Food and Agri Fund. So a very illustrious career. And... To round up the panel, we have uh, Manish Bafna with us. He's the director of, of uh, RFPIO, recently renamed to Responsive. He was also working at Owler before that, and he has held multiple uh, product management and software development roles in his career. Yes, uh, and that I would be Sparsh, uh, your moderator for the day. So with this, we'll be starting off the session. Um, So let's start with you, sir, uh, in, in, the, in the order of seniority. So, <coughs> sir, you are an investor, I am an investor, and we have been seeing this happen in front of our eyes. Just wanted to get some nuances uh, out of this. So more and more we are seeing startups coming out of the hinterlands. But at the same time, uh, we hear or we feel that a lot of resources, a lot of capital availability, a lot of... Uh, human resources and sometimes even the TG exists concentrated in you know metros. So while we are talking about this narrative or maybe the reality that there is a surge in the hinterlands, what's your view on it? What's the nuanced view that you'd like to present to the audience? Uh, thanks, Sparch. Uh, I think when it comes to TG, I think things are changing very fast. Uh, I believe. Uh, you know, like the income pyramid in metros have more like a diamond with the middle class bulging. That phenomena has set in in rural areas or so-called hinterland. Uh, so I don't think TG is an issue, right? I think another important parameter is aspirations are becoming homogeneous, right? Uh, so thanks to social media, thanks to 4G, thanks to smartphones, uh, a person in Kalahandi or a Barabaki, I think he's equally aware what's happening around, you know, not just in his territory, but around the world, uh, like, we, like we do. So I think the aspirations are becoming homogeneous. Everyone is looking for uh, best product, best services, best healthcare, best education, good roads. So, so I don't think the aspiration levels are different when we, when we compare Bharat with India, right? But for any business model to be successful, I think you need to crack four A's. Huh? 
So one is, of course, aspiration. Second is awareness. Third is accessibility. And fourth is affordability. Right? I believe you've cracked first two, which are aspirations and awareness. Right? I'm very hopeful accessibility is improving in the next five years, thanks to highways, expressways, Delhi Meerut is one hour, Delhi Sonipat, Delhi Panipat, everything is like one hour, which is used to take three hours. So that will that is bound to change the landscape of hinterland, uh, railway network. So both digital connectivity and uh, physical connectivity will make more and more products and services accessible to smaller towns. The biggest challenge for any startup or any company is the first mile and the last mile. I think with those transactional costs can come down significantly because of better logistics and infrastructure, business models will pivot to cater to the hinterland. Affordability is a matter of time. I know the per capita incomes are lower, smaller towns, but so is cost of living, right? So maybe another 10 years. So I'm, I'm very optimistic that uh, things are bound to change. Another point I want to make is specific to agri-tech sector. I think this is one of the sectors which has converged India and Bharat. A lot of solutions, and Seshang is a great example, uh, you know, out of Patna, build in Bharat and build for Bharat. I think very rare breed. But I also see hundreds and thousands of startups uh, cities like Bangalore and Pune and Hyderabad and Chennai, working, f f uh, building solutions for rural India. Now, for solutions, those solutions to scale, you need a lot of entrepreneurs on the ground, right? So, for agri-tech to become mainstream, to reach, let's say, 100 million farmers, you need lo those entrepreneurs who are on the grassroots because they understand the grassroots situation, they enjoy a lot of trust and credibility among farmers, right? So I think, in a way, uh, you know, this growth of agri-tech is bound to drive a lot of entrepreneurship on the, at the grassroots level. So you'll see a lot of guys running processing centers, building warehouses, running drones, collecting data. I think they're like silage stations. There's so many uh, models which were not viable will become viable. So I think it's, it's a great convergence of India and Bharat, you know, bringing two worlds together. And hopefully, that will drive jobs, that will drive entrepreneurial spirit, and that will drive demand. You know, a lot of these guys I'm talking about, even if they're working on a part-time basis, they earn somewhere between 8,000 rupees to 20,000 rupees a month, which is significant in those particular geographies. So you are, in a way, creating wealth in those uh, markets. So I remain optimistic. I think uh, Bharat is the future. Uh, so far, as I always say, most of the business models are built for maybe top 500 pin codes in India. You are right, HSR layouts, Gurgaon, Hinjewadi. You know, these are the places where you go test market and scale up businesses. The next set of entrepreneurs are the ones who want to build, uh, you know, solutions for 7,000 pin codes in India. I think that's that's going to transform uh, the hinterland. So, Himeda uh, sir, I was hearing your response, and I actually have a follow-up. If I may be the devil's advocate, and then say that I, as an investor, see, okay, let's keep aside, let's say, agri-tech, or, you know, some of the kind of sectors which rightly should be placed in the hinterlands, right? They don't have no place being in, like, you know, Kormangla. But let's say, let's say talk about SaaS, and I would also like Manish sir to kind of weigh on this later on. But... Let's say, for example, for SaaS, I've been seeing that startups start in the hinterlands, but then this very quickly kind of, you know, migrate to one of these core areas. First of all, do you see that happening? Secondly, what are your views on this, on how do we kind of rectify this? Because there must be some pain points, right, for these entrepreneurs that they're moving away, right? So how do we rectify this? Uh, you're right. I think three or four pain points, and I think Shashank would be in be better position to talk about it because he has faced those in his journey. But I think first and foremost, uh, uh, I would say incubation in tier two, tier three, or three cities is is either lacking or poor, you know. And I'm not talking that we need to create thousand, two thousand incubators. It's about the quality of incubation, you know. Can do you have people who can support uh, these young startups when they need a lot of handholding? So I think that has to go up multiple notches. It could be the local engineering college. It could be 
a local university who can take up the mandate, and I think government is, through Atal Innovation Mission is also trying to achieve that. So that's one. Second is talent. You know, data scientist in Bangalore is easy. Uh, in Chandigarh, Patna, Bihar, <laughs> any, and even in tier two towns, Jaipur, for example, is tough. How do you find those guys who can work with you? How do you build a team sitting in those places, right? So uh, I'm, I may be headquartered in Jaipur, but my tech team is going to sit out of Koramangla. So I think that has to change, right? So for that, thankfully, you know, there is enough talent factories in rural areas. You know, we, we oldest IIT is IIT Khadakpur, right? Which is the Intel, and I would say. Uh, now you are IIT Rudki, I am on the board of incubator at IIT Mundi. Fantastic startups out of those places. Uh, then there you have I am both guy and things like that. The challenge is that talent doesn't stay there because the ecosystem is underdeveloped. So I think that has to change. You, we need to build reasons and opportunities for these guys to stay there. And last but not the least, the investment there. All investors are lazy. <laughs> we, we love deals coming to us. How, much, how many of us go to the deals? It's very rare that people go to the deals. So I think that mindset also has to change, you know. And thankfully, there's some bit of saturation in the bigger towns and the valuations are going beyond, I would say, investors' appetite in a way. Uh, so they are looking for proprietary deals. They're looking for some good entry valuations. And for me, tier two, tier three rounds are the perfect places to go out and scout for deals. Great. So I'll just quickly want Manish sir to kind of weigh on this. So you have been building, you know, a SaaS, a global SaaS company, its operations in India. So I think it would be a very pertinent question for you. Do you feel these pain points, you know, building a SaaS, you know, business in Coimbatore? Would you think your life would have been easier if you were in Kormangala? Uh, I, I don't think so. That is, it's difficult because, uh, again, with the connectivity, with the 4G, 5G that we are talking about, uh, Again, our team, again, though we say that, okay, we are based in Coimbatore and uh, working with 20% uh, of the Fortune 500 companies, uh, we still have our team, which is remote. Again, we have few people in Noida, we have few people in Surat, we have few people in Pune, Bombay, so we have it throughout the location. So I don't think uh, city matters now, and with this uh, change in the hybrid, again, we have our team completely diversified. But what I would also say is uh, cities like Coimbatore, have uh, actually uh, complemented the tier one cities because it's not a competing with them, but rather it's complementing them. Because if you see the um, lease in the tier, tier one cities have gone super high. And again, I'm hearing this uh, about Bangalore where it's going to uh, 100, 200 per square feet, which is way too high. Uh, so, and I've seen all these big enterprises um, now having their satellite offices in tier two cities in Coimbatore. In fact, I can say that okay, at least there are eight to ten uh, big companies that I've seen uh, have set up their smaller office in Coimbatore because uh, there's a lot of talent from Coimbatore which moved to cities like Bangalore and Chennai, uh, which we can we can easily see it. I can just give you an example. I was working in Bangalore, and to get a train ticket or a bus ticket on a Friday evening from Bangalore to Coimbatore was next to impossible. And the same thing was up, same thing like going from Coimbatore to Bangalore on a Sunday night what's next to impossible. That means I have to book at least two or three months in advance. So that means that's a big talent pool sitting in the tier two cities like Coimbatore, Salem, again, I'm just talking about Southern India, um, which because of this hybrid and the remote work, they're settling over there and it's an opportunity for big enterprises to have their offices uh, in uh, smaller cities and which will complement their uh, bigger cities. So Sashank, you are the entrepreneur on this on this panel. So what is your view on this? So you have you know worked in in Patna. You know you have now also worked with you know the, the global investors. You have seen the entire you know spectrum of things, so to say. Do you agree with this? Do you agree that uh, enough has been done in the hinterlands for an entrepreneur to succeed? Where are the lacunas that you see, or you know from your experience, or dec decades of experience? Where do you think we are lacking and we can do better? I think uh, <clears throat> before talking about uh, where do we lack, I think uh, we'll start maybe from where uh, what Hemendra said, that uh, things have been changing very drastically. And if I just uh, recall uh, uh, you know, our own journey at Dehat, uh, and 
firstly, I think I've been thinking, I mean, that, that was back of sta backstage conversation, that what can be a better word of hinterland? Thing. So that's a food for thought for the entire house, right? I mean, I've been facing this question that building business out of hinterland. So again, I think I keep thinking that what can be the better word. So, but uh, but uh, in our case, uh, I think it was a natural journey, right? If you have to work with farmers, if you have to work for farmers, uh, so then you have to stay closer to them, right? It's sim it's it's very simple that you know that the entrepreneur it has they have to stay closer to the problem statement. So like so. That's exactly what we did. Uh, you're talking about Patna. We started in 2011. We set up our Patna office in 2014. So first three years, in fact, uh, forget about Delhi or Bangalore. We didn't even have our office at Patna. Why? Because that was not needed at that point of time. We set up our Gurgaon office in 2018, like when we really wanted to strengthen the tech team or so. So I think uh, it, it's not fair to generalize that what is, and I think for a country like India, for any of the sector or subsector, there is no fixed template to, you know, to, to run the, the machine or basically to pursue your dream. I think we did what was right. And whenever there was a need, right? When we felt that no out of Patna, it's very difficult to getting tech talent. And that's how basically we set up Gurgaon office and so on, so on, so on, right? But still out of, uh, even as on date, uh, as uh, you know, you rightly said, right? So we are still headquartered at Patna. Uh, out of a workforce of total 2,000, uh, almost, uh, not almost, like more than 1,600, 1,700 people, they are, uh, they are located in districts, not even uh, talking about, like, we do, we do have offices in like Lucknow, Jaipur, or maybe Pune, Indore, but I'm talking about core districts, whether it's Khandwa, Khargon of the world, or Nasik, Sangli, or Muzaffarpur, or, or Aligarh, for that matter. So I think in our case, I think we did just like, you know, what we thought that probably this is the need. As far as uh, uh, raising funds, investment, uh, have been learning through our own experiences. And for us, it was very important to basically, you know, to see the equal amount of excitement, you know, in the person who is going to invest. So for us, uh, I mean, whether it was important for the other person or not, but more than that, it was very important for us to, to see that, you know, that whether that someone is ready to come to field side or not. And uh, on a lighter note, uh, I mean, during the field visit, to jo jitna remote district hota tha, wahan leke jate the. So right, I mean, there were few operating districts uh, close to Patna where I think the field visit could have been done within a day. But we used to take it to maybe the farther district, like which is like six hours from Purnia. Right? The person should also understand ki kitna pain lena pad raha hai ground level pe, or what exactly you are building, right? Whether you are not very comfortable to come for just one visit. Uh, you know, people are building business models where farmers are ordering any agri input and you are delivering in less than 24 hours, right? India is talking about 40% post-harvest loss and you are aggregating from those remote locations and your post-harvest loss is less than 1%. So people should understand these things. So I think uh, that's how I think we have been seeing. But uh, to answer your question, I think uh, we have found enough set of people, whether investors or banks, or uh, you know the companies, uh, or the prospective people or employees, I think uh, you know getting more comfortable to visit so-called the hinterland, and that's why I'm saying that you know that things have been changing very drastically. I think as as on date, uh, I don't see I don't see challenge. We don't find challenge uh, you know let's say recruiting people or expecting someone who belongs to Maharashtra and working in the rural area of Rajasthan or vice versa, I think we are not seeing those challenges, largely because of what Heminder said, that physical digital connectivity, it's at different level. Uh, probably I think it was possible for me to, to manage all the, this uh, trajectory because uh, I came from that place. So I always, and, and I think all, all of us as an entrepreneur, we are always a forward-looking person, right? We are always a very ambitious, optimistic person. So at some point of time, we used to walk, you know, to, you know, to travel to school for five kilometers. We used to study in Lalten, versus that now there is a 22 hours power supply. But it was easier for us, like, you know, who have seen those days. But versus that today, it's, it's a different level. Whether you go to Odisha or MP or wherever, you will find amazing, physical as well as digital connectivity. The traction, what we are talking about, I think it's just, uh, it's an obvious outcome of two data point. 
when we say that 50% of our population is in the range of you know 25 years old right when we say that 70% population they are in rural tier 2 tier 3 when we say that uh, that you know that for first 50 100 million internet user ab ho gaya let's let, let's build for next 500 million internet user and then when we say that you know that as a problem solver you have to stay close to to the problem statement so then whatever traction we are seeing in the hinterland i think that's 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 pretty obvious it has to happen and nobody literally nobody is feeling shy in visiting those hinterland right i i mentioned right i mean uh, each of the investors whether the the whether i mean each of the investor whether sequoia or process or everyone they all visited uh, in a field location uh, 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 i think one or two of our board meetings i mean it uh, it don't happen in gurgaon right we make sure that you know that it would happen closer to the field side maybe at some paddy field or grape field right and we all we all enjoy the simple reason is because things things have been changing and still it has a long long way to go but abhi tak itna hua hai to aage bhi ho gayi so definitely i as a vc can kind of concur what he's saying because uh, you know having worked in this space for now 5 6 years i realized that uh, just just 5 6 years ago there was not so much pressure on vcs to go and you know source from the hinterlands or let's you know let's just stop saying hinterlands let's just say bharat maybe that would be a good uh, alternative word so there is now a lot of impetus from the investor side also to go out and look out for these kind of opportunities because opportunities are being built there right at the end of the day vc vcs investors will follow uh, those opportunities i have a follow up shashank so you know you mentioned in a line that you no know, entrepreneurs are very forward looking they are very ambitious i think i'll add an adjective to that they are also audacious right and uh, the kind of audacity to build these you know multi billion dollar businesses at times especially when you know you are coming from a small place you might have not so much exposure right we are privileged to be from elite institutions but not the entire country is right but they're still building so what intrigues me as an investor is where is this audacity where is this drive coming in the in the you know tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 cities even villages that okay i will not go do a sarkari job i will not sit for let's say you know competitive exams but i'll build a business i'll be an entrepreneur you know and i'll fight with this big city boys and girls where is this coming from so uh, i think firstly to i i don't buy this notion uh, you know that you know that let's say that every uh, startup or organization uh, it gets started with an aim of building a multi billion dollar so right i mean value i think it's just a it's a it's a it's a it's an outcome it's a by product and i think as a as a stakeholder uh, all of us i think we should we should change or we should find a better way right simple thing right for example while introducing me instead of saying that you know that dehat is valued 700 million dollar i think you could have said that nahi they are working with more than 2 million farmers so the point is this is not where you start your journey at least on day 0 i don't think or like if like few of us or if any person think in this way according to me that's not the right way on day 0 nobody thinks that you know that will build yes everyone wants to build something very big very large but not like in terms of multi billion dollar yoga but uh, but yes going back to your question i think where is this coming from because uh, i would say uh, again the see information discovery is uh, is not a problem right these days so everyone is very well aware of even in the deep rural location that what's happening today in india right and uh, i think this is one good i would say uh, point where the various stakeholders are they are talking more or less the same thing whether it's government whether it's academic institution whether it's different types of investors or entrepreneurs right so if everyone is more or less talking about building in india right i mean instead of being a you know job seeker right i mean be a job creator right so those notions philosophies like the like the youth or maybe people they are hearing more or less the same thing from different channels and the outcome is that's the outcome that's the reason why you are seeing that this is coming from there right and uh, and as an and 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 hence uh, there is an acceptance right at least today again on a positive note at least today if any person 
you know, when 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 they express their interest to their family members or parents in deep rural area that I want to start my startup, at least like the parent would recognize ki ye kya bol rahe. Right? I mean, back in 2011, like in our case, like when, when I did mention that, you know, that lesson, we want to become an entrepreneur, right? I mean, with all due respect, my parents, it was very difficult for them to digest ki kya bol rahe. So, uh, so at least there is an acceptance, right? Every single household, they understand what is a startup all about. Right? So you see that acceptance, right? Um, uh, when I go to villages, right, my ancestral village, and you know, talk about okay, these are you know, startup and you know, the entrepreneurs. It seems very. It's happening. It's, it's hap happening. It's and not. I'm not talking about Patna or Indore for that yeah. matter, right? You go even in deep rural area, people are bubbling with random ideas, and which which is a first or maybe like you know like uh, your uh, one stage prior to the day zero, right, of becoming an entrepreneur. That's a separate thing that now what are the right step for us, right? It's like, you know, that yes, we have activated a large mass, but now everyone who are bubbling with the ideas, who are now aspiring to become an entrepreneur, do we have a right ecosystem to support them or not? That's a separate thing. But uh, it's becoming mostly because they are hearing same thing, same vibe from different things, from all the channels. And uh, at the same time, obviously, they are seeing number of, you know, success stories. And, uh, and, and more importantly, they are seeing the opportunities just next to where they are. So. Makes sense, yeah. You know, uh, totally taking the feedback on, on the valuation. See, it's an investor's, uh, uh, I think, narrow-sightedness that, that yeah, leads to it. Everybody <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally uh, happy to learn. So I think um, we'll now slightly uh, move towards closing this. Uh, I always equate this to how the, the Indian cricket team has changed. If you were to look at just you know a decade or two prior, it was all basically people from the upper echelons of the society in the in the in the cores of or maybe the big cities, and now it's all a game of uh, you know boys and girls from from Bharat uh, now you know representing India. I think something similar is also happening in entrepreneurship and will continue to happen. And I'm personally very glad.